So I have a, uh, a different amplifier that I want to, oops, op amp circuit I want to show at this point. We'll have slightly different wiring from our previous one. So now I'm going to put RI, VI, I'm sorry, into really the negative terminal of the input of the op amp rather than the positive one as I did previously. So if you need to, here, actually I'll draw both. I'll draw the previous one that we had. What we had before was, I'll draw it in a way that will look similar to what we're doing now. Okay. This was the, the previous circuit. And we found that VO was equal to R1 plus R2 over R1, which reduces to this right here. Okay, that's what we had before. Now we have this. So if you if you notice, what we've swapped was the ground and the VI. We, we swapped those. So we want to analyze this. Analyze using ideal op-amp rules. Okay, so let's do KCL at this point. Now I have a branch, I mean I have a node that has three branches connected to it, right? I'm going to have a current going in here and a current, let's say that'll come in here and theoretically a current that would leave. I know this current I minus is equal to zero, right, by definition. So the current flowing in here is going to be VI minus V minus divided by R1. The current flowing in from the top here will be VO minus V minus over R2. And KCL we'll say that uh, VI minus V minus over R1 plus, these are currents entering now, plus VO minus V minus over R2 is equal to zero, right? Now what's V minus? Well, this is where our op amp rule comes in really handy. The op amp rule number one is that V plus is equal to V minus. So therefore, since V plus is grounded, V minus must be equal to zero. So we then have V I over R1 plus V O over R2 is equal to zero, and I can easily solve for VO now, and it will be minus R2 over R1 times VI. This amplifier here is called a inverting, inverting amp amplifier. Inverting. Alright. This is called a non-inverting op-amp or op amplifier. These are two uh, cl standard uh, elementary uh, topologies, op-amp topologies, that will, you'll just see over and over and over again. We can combine these to do some, some other... Um, some other classic or standard topologies as well. So let's just uh, explore this a little further. Uh, let's suppose, I'm going to explore it to try to understand, uh, actually put some currents and some voltages to this, so it doesn't seem so abstract. Suppose R2 was equal to R1, okay, and we'll say is 1K then the claim would be that VO is equal to minus VI. So you put plus one in, you'll get minus one out. 
So let's let's try that. How would that work? So we'll draw this circuit here. Let's say that we put in. Oops, I have that grounded. So let's say we put two volts in. All right. This is 1k. This is 1k. And the claim is, does that VO would be equal to minus two volts? Is that true? Well. Let's calculate the current. What is the current that's flowing in this direction? It's 2 volts minus the voltage at V minus, but V minus, remember, is equal to the same voltage as V plus, which is grounded. So it's 2 volts minus 0 over 1K equal 2 milliamps flowing in there. That means, because I have 2 milliamps flowing in here and because there's a 0 current flowing into V minus, that means Therefore, I must have 2 milliamps flowing here. Right. So the voltage drop across this resistor is going to be 2 milliamps times 1 kilo ohm equal to 2 volts. But I'm starting on the left side here uh, at a potential of V minus, which is equal to V plus, which is equal to 0. So this is 0 volts on this side. And if I'm dropping 2 volts across that resistor, that means over on this side, I'm at 0 volts minus 2 volts for a net of 2 volts. And this checks out. Now, if I had had, let's say, 1K, but instead this was 10K, then if I had 2 volts, I still would get 2 milliamps flowing. And I still would have 2 milliamps flowing here as well. But in this case, the voltage drop would be 2 milliamps times 10 kilo ohm, or 20 volts. And so the voltage at the output would be 0 volts. That is the voltage over here at V minus. Minus the voltage drop, which is 20 volts. And so I would have minus 20 volts, which is exactly what this predicts. It would say it's equal to minus R2 over R1 times VI, and what I have is 10K over 1K times 2 volts, and that indeed is minus 20 volts. Now I want to show you a slightly different analysis method, so uh, a different analysis uh, approach, which personally is my favorite approach for solving op-amp circuits. So let's, uh, we're going to keep going with this inverting amplifier. And because, what I want to point out is that, let me draw this. Okay, so this is V out, this is V O. Okay, this is R1, this is R2. This voltage here is V minus. So I can actually draw a battery, a voltage source here, right? That's my VI. And I could, over here, draw a controlled voltage source, right? Which is what's inside the op amp, which I've kind of forgotten about because I'm using this ideal symbol. But what I really have here is I have two voltage sources, VI and VO. And they're tied together through this resistor network these two series resistors, R1 and R2. At the middle point, or the junction between R1 and R2, is a node that I call V minus. That voltage is being monitored by the op amp at its input V minus, but no current flows into it. So I need not draw the op amp and show an additional current path, for there is no other additional current path. And what I, when I look at this abstractly, if I, if I gave you this and I, and I drew it you know, more conventionally as just like this, and I said, here's a voltage source, here's a voltage source, this is called V1, this is called V2, and I said, what is the voltage here in the middle, Vx, right? You could write that as a superposition of these two voltages, right? By, by inspection, you could say, ah, Vx is, let me turn off V2 and see the portion that comes from V1. I just have a voltage divider. So I'd have R2 over R1 plus R2, V1. 
And then let me turn off V1, apply V2, and I see my contribution from V2. That would be R1 over R1 plus R2 times V2. All right, very easy. Well, guess what? You can do exactly the same thing when solving op-amp circuits. Here we would write V minus is equal to R2 over R1 plus R2 VI plus R1 over R1 plus R2 times VO. Now you may, and, and, and you, may, you may say, wait a minute, this is different because in the, in the V1, V2 problem, we're actually given V1 and V2 and we're asked for Vx. In the op-amp problem, it's not like we're approaching the problem having been given what VO is, right? In fact, VO is what we're trying to solve. But it turns out that that's immaterial. Whether VO is an independent or a dependent variable in the system, this voltage division, the superposition expression we've just written, does not change. It's still, this satisfies KVL and KCL. And so we're not making a claim at this point as to which one, um, you know, which variable is dependent and which is independent. Now we do have a constraint here. Uh, we have a constraint that V minus and VO are tied together, right? It turns out that V minus, in this case, we have V minus is equal to, um, what is it? It's going to be V plus, or V minus minus V plus, which is zero in this case, right? That's zero, which is equal to minus delta V. Right? Minus delta V. And what is delta V? We know that V out is equal to AV times delta V. Right? So now let's, instead of writing VO in terms of delta V, let's write delta V in terms of VO, because after all, we're trying to solve for VO. So we can write 1 over AV times VO. And all I need to do now is once I have this superposition expression that I can write by inspection, I'll, I just replace minus or V minus with an expression for uh, VO. I have minus VO over AV is equal to R2 VI plus R1 VO all over R1 plus R2. And Actually, I, I derailed here. I didn't mean to do this. Um, I forgot. We are actually now on the ideal path where we've claimed that AV is infinite, right? So if AV is infinite, then, then this is equal to zero, right? So we have zero is equal to the expression on the right, which now, I won't even bother writing the denominator because that will not make a difference anymore. And you see we have R2VI plus R1VO is equal to zero, and that, when we rearrange for VO, will give us exactly the same result we found previously, which is V out is equal to minus R2 over R1 times VI.